Hey folks, Will here again with Happily Ever Outdoors. So today we are going to be taking a look at the Boss Fire Kit from Stanford Outdoor Supply. Now Boss stands for Bug Out Survival Supplement. So the idea of this kit is that you can purchase this and you can use it to supplement your existing gear uh, for your bug out bag, maybe your emergency kit at your house or your get home bag, whatever you would like to call it, or even just you know to add to your hiking gear, your camping gear uh, to have in the case of an emergency. Or it works as a really great uh, standalone as well if you just don't really have much uh, survival gear uh, to start with and you're just trying to figure out where to get a good baseline at. This is a awesome kit as far as that's concerned. Now Stanford Outdoor Supply currently has four kits that are available, one that is on pre-order. Um, so you'll be able to look at our channel as I get those reviews out to see every kit in their lineup. But in this video, I'm just going to focus on one, which is the Fire Boss. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you to Stanford Outdoor Supply for sending this product to us to test and review. I need to let you guys know that I am not a paid representative of the company, so although I did receive this product at no cost to me, any statements that I make or opinions that I express in this video are my own. This kit currently goes for $19.99 on StanfordOutdoorSupply.com. This is a 33-piece fire starting kit. It includes one lighter, steel wool, four pieces of char cloth, two tea light candles, one ferrocerium rod with a striker, one pocket magnifier, matches, six magnesium capsules, one ounce fatwood sticks, foil paper, a pencil sharpener, six tinder quick tabs, ten feet of jute twine, a waterproof tinder bowl, wire saw, six feet of Kevlar thread and a flange bearing, a folding knife, and a survival information sheet. You guys can see uh, right here that it does come in a foil type uh, pouch that is very sturdy. Um, it is also waterproof, but there is also a uh, Ziploc type line there where you can reseal this. Another nice feature, if you look inside the bag, you can see that almost every piece of uh, equipment Tinder, everything in here is individually bagged with the exception of a few items. Looks like the ferro rod is not individually bagged. The folding knife in there is not individually bagged. But other than that, everything that you're going to need to keep dry um, is individually bagged. So if you want to open this up and you want to split it up over multiple kits or just for while you have it in use out in the field, it's great to know that each individual element of this kit is protected. You know, theoretically, in an emergency or survival type situation, you do have a sealable container that you could uh, use for gathering water, things like that. So, good little details to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this kit. I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of laying everything out on the table. So, there's the ferro rod. Actually, let's take a look at that real quick. I am very surprised by the size of this ferro rod and the, uh, the size of the striker included. That's really, really surprising to me right off the bat given the $20 price point of this. I would expect a much smaller, um, kind of chintzier looking ferro rod, but this thing looks to be pretty good quality. Pretty good size. I'm not sure exactly how large it is. Maybe quarter inch, something like that. Um, but it's nice to see that in the kit because, you know, a ferro rod in my mind is going to be really your primary tool for, for fire starting in an emergency situation if you have one. Lighter is great but that's only going to go for a limited period of time and then it's going to be out. I love the fact right off the bat that they actually give you a usable tool here. Very nice. Now let's go ahead, I'll just go ahead and spread the rest of this out and I'll kind of try to go down the list and identify each of the elements that we uh, talked about when I went through the list. All right, so first up, we have the lighter. You can see this is pretty much your standard uh, Bic lighter. A nice little detail is that they added this piece of wire that's twisted around the lighter. Um, that's nice because you do have that little piece of wire that you could work with if you needed that for something. Uh, but the primary purpose here that I can see is to keep this button here from being depressed. Do you see that? Because that wire is there, you cannot push that down. So that's not gonna um, allow the opportunity for the button to get depressed 
down and for you to lose all the fuel that's inside this big lighter. All right, next up we have the steel wool. Now you can see this is a very small amount of steel wool. So if you're actually using this for fire starting, um, it's not gonna go real far. It's nice to have it. I mean, for like a one-time situation, I might personally, if I were trying to take this as like a standalone kit, go ahead and supplement that and add some more steel wool in there uh, just because it's not very uh, expensive, very easy to come by. Next up we have their char cloth. Now if you're not familiar with char cloth, as the name implies, it is really charred cloth. Uh, one way you can make this yourself is to place some pieces of cloth inside of a uh, metal tin. A lot of people like to use an Altoids tin and you can put that over a fire and you get it just hot enough um, that it'll start smoking and what it'll do is um, change that cloth um, to this black cloth that you see here without it burning up. So essentially it almost gets it right to the point of burning without actually burning. Um, so the advantage of that is that when you're done you're going to have these pieces of cloth if I can get it out of here that are going to ignite very, very easily. Some of the things you would look for for good quality char cloth is that it's completely blackened. Obviously if there's portions of it that are still white um, or tan or whatever the original color was then it's not very well charred. This stuff looks very, very well charred. You can see the kind of charcoal on my fingers coming off. Um, so this is gonna work really, really good as a tinder. All right, next up we've got two tea light candles. Um, not something people would normally think of as a emergency fire starting tool, uh, but when you really stop and think about it, it's a really an ingenious idea. Um, Candles, of course, are going to burn very steady for a long period of time. So if you're trying to get a uh, fire started, maybe you have less than ideal tinder, weather conditions aren't the great greatest. Uh, one little trick you can do to use a candle to help you to start a fire uh, would be to get your candle ready. ready. Um, you might take two branches or whatever you have um, and lay them on either side of that candle, leaving a space in the middle. Then you can kind of cross stack um, your tinder and things um, over that uh, two pieces of wood, leaving that gap in the middle. You can go ahead and light that candle, let that candle burn underneath um, that tinder pile that you have going uh, until it gets dry enough and hot enough that it can be sustained on its own. Then you can take a branch or whatever you have and push the candle out from underneath, blow that candle out, and then save it for later so you can reuse it. Um, so definitely a great uh, another great option to get a fire going. Um, something really cool to see in here. Next on the list, we already talked about this at the beginning just because I was so enthusiastic about it, uh, but we do have this very, very nice ferro rod. I just want to test out this ferro rod real quick. Now with all these ferro rods, this coating on the outside isn't there to do anything really as other than to kind of make it look good and to maybe uh, protect it from the elements a little bit more. Um, it's nice that this has a lanyard that you can untie, so you can see you've got some length here. This is attached, but you've got enough room that you can actually work with it. So usually to start with, I'll go ahead and take one side of the ferro rod. You've got a scraper you can see on this side. And just go ahead and scrape that material off of there. Yeah. Now a lot of times with a ferro rod, that although this isn't really a small ferro rod, but a smaller rod like this, I like to do like a drawback kind of method rather than a, a uh, striking forward just because you're less likely to disturb whatever you're trying to ignite when you pull back like this. All right, so you're definitely gonna be able to throw some decent sparks with this ferro rod. So that's very nice to see. Okay, next we have a pocket magnifier, also known as a Fresnel lens. I actually own several of these already. I think this is a really great piece of kit um, to have. If you've ever seen in, you know, like a survival movie or maybe you've watched one of those survival, you know, reality TV shows or you've seen somebody start a fire uh, using their eyeglasses, um, this is the same principle, but this is a much, much higher magnification. I don't see any markings on this, but I know like the other Fresnel lenses that I have, uh, which seem very, very similar to this, if they're not the same uh, brand, are about like 10 times magnification. And that's actually going to generate enough heat. If you have enough sunlight, you're going to get that into a very focused dot, and you'll be able to start a fire with that. 
What's cool about this particular type of Fresno lens is that this is not glass. This is flexible plastic, as you can see, and uh, it's not going to break. You can always count on this. They also give you a little plastic sleeve with it that you can use to kind of help keep it from getting scratched or anything like that. So it'll give you the uh, maximum magnification uh, possible. So very cool to see that. Again, that's another alternative means of starting a fire. Um, you could use this utilizing some of this tinder that you see here. Maybe that char cloth, something like that is going to be very, very easy to ignite. Um, but uh, if you get a hang of using one of these, you'd be surprised by what you can do with it. Next up, we have a box of 40 waterproof matches. This makes four means of starting a fire right here, which is really, really nice to see in this kit. Um, it looks like you've got a good strike surface on both sides of the box here, which is nice. And I'm not sure, I believe this is another striking surface. It feels kind of rough. I think that's what their thought process is here. So that gives you another surface to strike off of, I believe. Uh, these seem like decent quality matches. And let me just see if I can strike one of these off here real quick, see how easy they strike. So that one went very, very easily. I'll try one more, just so you guys can see. Yeah, see, very, very, very easy to strike those matches. It didn't take hardly any effort at all. So that is nice to see that these aren't some cheapo, chintzy uh, matches that aren't going to work. These will actually work for you. And given that they're waterproof matches, you should be good to go, even if you happen to be in a little bit of rain or something like that. All right, we've also got a pack of six. Correct? Yes, yeah, six magnesium capsules. What this is, is in a capsule form where you'll be able to take this capsule and actually uh, crack it open. Or sometimes when these tend to get older, I know uh, from my experience and other folks' experience as well that sometimes these capsules will get brittle. So keep that in mind when you're handling them. However, um, either way, you're just going to break that capsule open and that magnesium powder is going to come out. And what that's going to give you is a uh, really, really nice supplement depending on what type of tinder you're using, especially, especially if you are in uh, wet weather or maybe your tinder is just a little bit damp, uh, magnesium will burn uh, at a couple thousand degrees. I've, I've heard up to like 4,000 degrees. So much, much incredibly higher than any other tinder is going to possibly burn. And it's going to ignite very, very easily. So what it's going to do is if you have some tinder that's maybe a little bit damp, it's going to ignite so hot and so fast that it's going to dry that out almost instantly and going to allow it to ignite. In short, you may be in a situation where you cannot get a fire started any other way. So I definitely would not waste these. I would not squander them if I had decent tinder, things like that. But if you're in a really, really bad straight and you need to get a fire started, this could really, really save your hiney. So We've also got one ounce of fatwood sticks in here. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I am a big fan of fatwood. Essentially, if you're not familiar with fatwood, basically it is the heartwood of a tree. A lot of times it can be harvested from tree stumps, sometimes at the base of large tree branches, depending on how the tree is growing. But essentially it comes from an area where sap tends to settle and it gets really, really condensed. So you, when you see fatwood, you You'll notice it because it'll have a dark orange color a lot of times, and it'll have kind of a distinctive, really, I don't know, tree sappy kind of smell. Um, and because it has so much sap in there, it's so dense, it's going to ignite very, very easily. It's going to burn very, very hot, and it's going to burn longer. So um, if you have less than ideal conditions, as long as you can get a small amount of tinder going, just enough to give you a flame, um, you can go ahead and throw a couple sticks of this on there and it's really going to extend that burn because it's going to take off very easily. It's going to burn very, very hot. Next on the list, we do have a piece of foil paper. Foil paper can be great, um, especially if you do not have a dry surface to get your fire started on. Um, you can go ahead and lay this out and this foil surface is not going to burn. It'll give you a dry surface area that you can get that initial a little bit of uh, spark and fire going on here. Another great thing about it is the fact that it is reflective, so not only will it shield um, your fire from the damp surface that might be underneath it, but it also kind of helps to reflect that heat upward 
just make it a little easier, especially if you're using a ferro rod or something like that, um, to get that little initial burn going. So very nice to see that. Another great addition. Again, a very nice tool. Um, if you're having difficulties getting a fire started, that might make your life a little easier. We also have a pencil sharpener included. Now this is bagged along with the bearing, which we'll get to in a little bit here. But why might you want a pencil sharpener in your kit? Well, that's what I uh, wondered at first when I saw that on the list. And then I realized that it's actually very simple and very ingenious. A simple pencil sharpener like this, by the way, this is made from metal. This is not plastic. Um, so this is going to hold up. Um, you could take small uh, twigs or branches, stick that inside there, same as you would a pencil, and you can just use that and make wood shavings. Um, when it comes to doing small tinder with wood, such as shavings, using a pencil sharpener, or making feather sticks uh, by shaving down a branch and getting those nice fine feather sticks, sometimes that can allow you to start a fire, even with a ferro rod, uh, without any kind of real tinder. Next, we have six tinder quick tabs. Several different companies make uh, something similar to this. Um, Ultimate Survival Technologies, um, Coglins, I believe, is one. I'm sure several other companies, but essentially, this is basically just a kind of a tightly woven bundle of cotton. And what you can do with this is you can kind of twist this and uh, pull it apart, um, and you can open this up. And you can see with a little bit of work, you can get it opened up like that where it's nice and fluffy. And that's going to take a spark real well from a ferro rod. Of course, if you have a lighter, it's going to be nothing to get that to ignite. We've also got 10 feet of jute twine. Jute is also going to burn very, very easily. This is another great option for a tinder. In my experience, if this stuff is dry, you can get to take a ferro spark all by itself. Just like the other stuff I just showed you, you can kind of open this up, pull it apart, uh, the fibers a little bit more to make it ignite a little bit easier. Also, it's cool because if you did not need this as a fire starting option immediately, um, you could utilize this as cordage as well. Okay, so next on the list is the waterproof tinder ball. I think what they're talking about here is this wet fire, uh, which is a fire starting tinder from Ultimate Survival Technologies. I think they just probably couldn't name it by name on the packaging, probably for licensing type things, uh, but that's not listed on there, so that must be what they're referring to with the waterproof tinder ball. Uh, but this is a really, really uh, good product. It definitely works. This is not a natural tinder, really. It's like a chemical-based, uh, but it will burn even in the wettest conditions. Um, it's gonna come out, it's like almost like a big, kind of round, white uh, capsule, but you can break it up. Um, to make it ignite a little bit easier. But you could literally, um, I've seen people throw this into a bowl of water and then light it or spark it with a ferro and it'll take off and it'll burn completely floating in water. So this is gonna be a awesome backup. Um, if the other stuff is not working, you're in really wet conditions, you've got kind of a one shot backup right here. But again, very good product and it will burn in bad conditions. So good to see that in there. All right, so next we have the wire saw. Now in my experience these things are not the greatest tool to be honest um, but in a pinch in a survival situation um, this could come in handy. So this will allow you to you know process some small stuff um, you know it's only going to have a limited life and it's probably going to break on you that's just the reality of this type of saw. However still cool to see that in there. Next we do have the Kevlar thread which this is six feet once again as well as the bearing that I mentioned earlier this is for a very specific purpose and that's going to be in order to start a bow drill fire now if you're not familiar with how to start a fire using the bow drill method um, there are a number of tutorials and videos that you can pull up on YouTube websites you can look up detailed descriptions but they also give you an explanation of how to use a bow drill in the survival instruction sheet, which we'll cover at the very end. So very cool to see this. The advantage in having this thread as well as this bearing is gonna make it way, way, way easier for you to start a bow drill fire. If you do need to, need to having that good cordage is gonna be absolutely essential. So very cool that that is included. So if you get to where you're at the end of everything else and uh, you don't have any other options to start a fire, you can go to the bow drill method and at least you'll have a head start with the uh, right gear to make it a little bit easier for you. 
All right, lastly, we do have a small folding knife included in this kit. It comes on a little keychain. This is stainless steel. It's stamped right on there that it's made in China. This is definitely a very, very inexpensive uh, knife. Um, nothing fancy by any stretch of the imagination. However, you know, in a kit that's for $20, uh, would you really expect that there would be a, you know, $10 or a $15 pocket knife in there? Not likely. Now, I have seen uh, at least one review where they kind of knock this kit because of the knife that's in here. And I will have to agree with the other reviewer that this knife does come very dull. All of that being said, um, if I got caught in a situation where I did not have any kind of knife whatsoever, I would be happy to have this. At least I have some kind of cutting tool without me having to, you know, resort to finding a rock that I can chip down to make it sharp enough. You've got something very basic you can start with. You're not going to baton with this. You're not going to chop limbs off with this, obviously. But at least you've got something that will allow you to do the work you do in this kit. Arguably, um, rather than a folding knife like this, they probably could have included a, like a disposable uh, razor knife. You know, one of those with the blade that extends out um, and that you break it off as it gets dull. Um, you know, maybe maybe that might have been a better option. That might be something for them to consider because they could probably put a larger uh, size one because they're very inexpensive and uh, that might give you something where you'd have a little more, um, you know, extended use since this isn't going to be a, you know, a knife that you can be able to do any heavy tasks with. Anyways, maybe that would have been a better way to go. But nice to see some kind of cutting tool in here. So worst case scenario, you got something to work with. All right, folks. So last but not least, we do have the survival instructions that are included. And I believe this is like a wax coated paper. So um, it's going to be, if not waterproof, at least water resistant. So if you have to pull this out, maybe it's raining or something like that, you're going to be all right. It's not going to get messed up. And what's cool about this is it actually tells you, it gives you fire starting basics you see here on the top. So if you're not familiar with fire starting, uh, whatsoever, you've got those ref to refer to. I will say, don't count on a kit like this to save your butt if things go sideways, okay? Plan ahead of time, practice, 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 and make sure you understand the basics of how to start a fire. I cannot emphasize that enough because you could literally die out in the woods with all of the tools in front of you if you do not know how to use them. And it does give you basics about uh, getting prepped for a fire, how to start a fire, and it also gives you some other instructions on. It tells you how you can start a fire with batteries. Um, it tells you how you can use the foil paper that's in the kit. So it kind of gives you some of that stuff that some people might not be familiar with how you're actually going to utilize it. It tells you how you can utilize it. Probably more importantly, it does have instructions on the back for how to start a bow drill fire. Again, a technique that if you want to be able to start a bow drill fire, much better idea to study and to practice ahead of time than to be caught in a situation where you absolutely need to start a fire and then try to do it. However, the fact that they do include the instructions is great. So if you did get in that situation, um, Lord forbid, where everything else had failed and you had to go to doing a bow drill fire, which generally speaking is going to be a last resort type of option, you do have instructions there. So what do I think of the Fire Boss from Stanford Outdoor Supply? I think it is an incredible kit. I cannot believe that they sell these things for 20 bucks. Now arguably, most of the items in this kit, they're not going to be very expensive. Of course, Stanford Outdoor Supply, they have to make a profit somehow, right? They can't give this stuff away. However, if you take into account, you think about how much thought went into gathering all these individual items and you weigh that against, if I were to go and try to purchase all of these things myself, imagine how many local stores you would have to go to potentially to find all of these items. Imagine if you went online, how many different places you would have to order, how much shipping you would have to pay, and the fact that most of these items, um, like the tenders and uh, tea light candles, things like that, you're probably going to have to buy larger packs and then break them down. So the fact that you get all the items in nice small quantities, everything is individually bagged, um, you know, that is really, really cool. I mean, where are you going to find these individual plastic baggies to put all this stuff in?
right? Um, so it saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort. Um, even for me, somebody who's, I won't say I'm super experienced when it comes to fire starting, but maybe a little more experienced than some. I can see all the value in here, in all these different items. There's a couple of things that even surprised me, things that I hadn't thought of. But especially if you're somebody who's kind of a beginner, maybe you're trying to put together your bug out bag or your get home bag. Uh, maybe you're trying to make like a you know survival kit to keep in your truck in case you ever break down while you're out in the woods. Or you know you're just wanting to put together a good emergency kit for your house, you know, for you and your family in case there was a flood or a tornado or something like that, and you had to evacuate it. You wanted to have a big kit, maybe you could put in a big rubber tub that you could pick up and you could take with you. Um, this would be awesome for something like that. Again, especially if you're not sure what to get. I mean, they do all the thinking for you. The fact that you get this much variety, this many options in a kit like this for 20 bucks comes in a nice resealable waterproof pouch so I can take all this stuff now that I've kind of inventoried it, got familiar with it, pack it up in there, and then you're good to go. I mean, you can throw this in your kit, you can throw this in the glove box of your car, you can throw it in your bug out bag, whatever, just as is, and you know you've got an awesome resource for getting fire started um, in an emergency situation. So very, very great kit. I cannot wait to get into the rest of the videos, break down the rest of these kits for you guys. But I think this fire kit is probably, I would imagine, one of their most popular. It's something a lot of people are interested in. And I mean, it's it's awesome kit. I mean, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, definitely check them out. Check out the rest of their kits as well. You can head on over to StanfordOutdoorSupply.com. All right, folks, thanks for watching. This concludes our review on the Stanford Outdoor Supply Fire Bug Out Survival Supplement Kit. Feel free to leave your comments and questions below, and make sure you subscribe to our channel.